7 out of 10. Up next, we have the famous Reptar. Just like Reptar, and it also even has a raft mode for water travel. This thing is absolutely sick. I remember wanting this thing to be real when I saw it as a kid. 9.8 out of 10. Next is the Kangaroo. The maximum mechanism for infant mobility. A bouncing walker that has an infrared sensor that detects anyone or anything that gets too close, and a backing up alarm, too. Personally, I like the design, and Dill seems to have a great time bouncing around in this thing. Not a bad invention by any means. 8.2 out of 10. Next, we have the Merry Magic Music Ball. Essentially, it's a colorful ball with a button on it that pops up a little merry go round when you press it. Now, I can imagine this thing being fun the first set. With these, you'll look cool while you remember it. It kind of reminds me of those, like, spy sets that you'd get in the early 2000s that comes with all those random trinkets that won't really help with spying, but they make you feel cool when you're a little kid. 7.6 out of 10. This one is kind of an honorable mention because it's not Stu's invention per se, but next is Tommy's invention. It's a rubber ball with a towel wrapped around it, tied with a rope. Attached to it are some keys, a rubber duck, and a teething ring. If Stu made this, I'd give it a really low score, but for a baby, Tommy did a fantastic job inventing this for his brother. 10 out of 10. Next, we have the opposite of the automatic lawn mower, the Lawn Grower 2000. It's a big old eyesore that goes in the middle of your yard and it can fertilize and water your lawn in three seconds, according to Sue. Basically, it's a fancy sprinkler system. Imagine some kids thinking they're going to run through the sprinkler, but instead their skin starts to burn as they get sprayed with fertilizer. Terrible idea. 0.25 out of 10. Next up, we have the totally original Sprinklematic 6000. Another automated yard sprinkler. It's already been done before. Unoriginal, recycled idea. 1 out of 10. Next is the totally practical Pickles Doorstopper 3000. It's a big metal electric doorstopper that'll hold any door open at any angle you choose on the keypad. Even in gale force winds. Stu puts it way too low and Grandpa bangs his head on it. After realizing his invention sucks, he ends up collabing with Susie to make doorstoppers out of her god-awful Reptar cereal bar she made with her Easy Bake Oven. I mean, at this point, why not just use a normal doorstopper wedge? 2.1 out of 10. Okay, so this thing was never actually named on the show, so let's just call it the Pickles Bebop 3000 because Stu likes adding a couple thousand to every invention he makes. It's a remote control bee and a robotic flower. The object of the game is to get the bee to retrieve the golden nectar in the flower. I personally would have a ton of fun with this toy. The flower is pretty irrelevant in my opinion. I'd just have a blast flying this thing around for fun. 8.4 out of 10. Up next is the Power Picker 2000, an automatic apple picking machine. It's supposed to suck up the apples and sort them into bins, but it tries to eat Stu, sucking up his tie and then his hair. <laughs> With 20 gigabytes of horsepower, it's guaranteed to pick apples 200 times faster than the average human. First of all, Stu, gigabytes aren't a unit of measurement that would apply here. Second of all, this takes all the fun out of apple picking. 3.2 out of 10. Next, we have the massive animatronic reptar. It's a giant metal reptar made by Stu, controlled via simulated reality gloves. This giant behemoth would later appear in the Rugrats in Paris movie as the Euro Reptar theme park paid Stu to make it. This thing is super cool. My favorite part had to be the controls. The way you use the gloves to move its arms is really awesome. Next, we have the Finster's Treehouse. This one was pretty tough on me. Stu didn't really invent tree houses, of course, but he did design and make this one by hand, and it, Tommy even refers to it as one of my daddy's inventions. So I felt like it did deserve a spot on the list. I would have loved this as a baby. 7.6 out of 10. Up next is the often overlooked Dustbot 3000. Okay, this one didn't really get a name. I just came up with Dustbot 3000, but it seems fitting to me. This thing is a robot that seems to have a camera on its face and vacuum hands. And if you're wondering why I call it the Dustbot 3000, well, here you go. If your house needs a good layer of dust, then look no further. Stu has you covered. Literally. 5.4 out of 10. Up next, we have the automatic plunger. It's kind of like a drill with a plunger fastened to it. It plunges for you, and it also spins. I'm not sure why you need it to spin, but it does. 4 out of 10. Here we have the Sonic Insect Repeller. It's a gun that repels insects using sound waves, or at least that's what it's supposed to do. I want to give it bonus points for creativity, but this thing actually just attracts wasps. I just remember why I my Sonic Insect Repeller in the closet. What it lacks in functionality, it makes up for in creativity. 4.5 out of 10. Up next is a gift for Dee Dee, the Flower Fountain. 
Again, another invention that didn't get a name in the show, but Flower Fountain is a fitting name. It's a fountain with a built-in irrigation system so the flowers can basically grow themselves. It's kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. 6.2 out of 10. Next, we get kind of abusive with the Mega Kitty Deluxe Playpen. It's literally a little playhouse with a lock on the door, so you can straight up lock your kids inside. Thankfully, Tommy is smart and can use his screwdriver to easily get out, but still the premise is pretty messed up. In an act of karma, the adults actually end up getting trapped inside of it. Don't like it, 0.1 out of 10. Next is the highly sought after Stove of the Future. Again, this one also didn't get a specific name, but Stu refers to it as the Stove of the Future, so that's what I'm going with. It's basically a fully automated stove robot. Ultimately, all it does is hit Drew in the head with pans and spray water everywhere, as well as blow a giant hole in Drew's kitchen ceiling. Look at the bright side. Your kitchen has a skylight now. It is fantastic for destroying your house if that's what you're after. 2.4 out of 10. Next is the wave of disaster preparedness equipment with the Earthquake Preparation Helmet, or E-Preparation H for short. Basically, it's a helmet that you put on your kid's head to protect them in the event of an earthquake. Solid 5 out of 10. Let's just hope that you know when the earthquake is coming so that you can make sure to put it on beforehand. And guess what? Now you will be able to know when the next earthquake is coming with the next invention. Stew Pickles Earthquake Detection System. It's basically a seismograph that makes the same crackling noise as a Geiger counter would when it measures radiation. It's supposed to help detect when an earthquake is coming. I gotta deduct points because I know good and well that he didn't invent the seismograph. 4.2 out of 10. And what would an earthquake preparedness kit be without this? Early warning devices. Since dogs can detect earthquakes before they happen, these devices are connected to the dog's head, and as soon as they detect an earthquake, it'll trigger an alarm to warn people. Clever idea, honestly. Too bad they didn't work properly at all. 6.9 out of 10. And, of course, nothing says I'm prepared for an earthquake quite like stew straps. Big Velcro straps that are guaranteed to make your breakables unbreakable. Wrap them around your appliances, cupboards, garbage cans, and anything else to make sure it'll be secured during the earthquake you won't know is coming because the Pickles Earthquake Detection System doesn't work at all. If he could actually make a device that would predict earthquakes, I'd go higher, but since he can't do that, I'd give the stew straps a 2.3 out of 10. The Pickles Toys Disaster Preparedness phase may not have been successful, but at least nothing exploded this time. Next we move back to the plant game with the Automatic Plant Waterer. It's a water tank with hoses that go into pots that are intended to water the plants, but instead the hoses just spray water all over your house. I love how after all these years, Stu still looks surprised when his inventions do more harm than good. I mean, how hard is it to water your plants yourself? 3.2 out of 10. Next, we get into the surveillance game with the Pickles Closed Circuit Baby Cam System. Basically, it's a closed circuit security camera system that Stu uses to watch the babies. It consists of small cameras that he has hidden all over the house in strange places. Definitely not creepy at all. But Stu didn't invent the closed circuit security system. This one's been done before. 2.2 out of 10. Next is the Pickles Noise Muffs. Essentially, a pair of noise-canceling headphones. They guarantee the user absolute silence. What? Exactly ahead of their time and they work properly. Not a bad invention. 8.4 out of 10. Next, we get back into the holiday spirit with the giant neon dreidel. It's a huge light-up spinning dreidel that Stu has affixed on top of his house as a festive holiday decoration. I like this one. 7.9 out of 10. This is Stu's biggest invention since the giant animatronic reptar. Christmas land. To quote Stu, he did for Christmas Land what Michelangelo did for the Sistine Chapel. It's an entire festive Christmas village. A terminal Stu has set up gives him full control over the automation he set up at Christmas Land. Brace yourselves for the PS de Resistance! Each pavilion has its own control. I can go from flurry to blizzard with just a turn of a knob. Sadly, it malfunctions and everyone ends up getting snowed in. Still cool though, 7.1 out of 10. Next up is the hilarious light system. 